dropping in on you. Hope everybody is off to a great start on this week. Look, it is Monday, so you know what that means. Another episode of Manly Mandates. This is a series I started as a defense to traditional masculinity especially black masculinity and to emphasize the need of black men to stand strong in their masculinity despite an obvious agenda and surge to push back against that uh what we're going to do is we're going to define masculinity each week we're going to go into different principles of manhood and masculinity and we are going to talk about why it's so important to have a universal definition of what black manhood or manhood in general looks like. And today I'm going to give you five, the five P's of black manhood. Um, real quickly, uh, it is immensely important that you understand the gravity of what's going on here. Uh, there's a push to feminize the black male image. There's a push to emasculate male power and male force uh, in general. We as blacks can least afford to have our men not stand in a place of power uh, in the true sense of their masculinity because without that guard, uh, we are completely vulnerable to all assaults. Uh, so, and I don't mean just physically. So here we go. The five P's of manhood. Uh, again, this applies across the board, but it is def definitely uh, more uh, pronounced when it is present and absent uh, in black males. First and foremost, a black man is a protector. And it's important to understand this because so much is given to provision. So much is given to the notion of a man being a provider that we forget what our most innate and primitive uh, drive as a man and it's to be a protector we aren't defined as protectors too often we aren't um, developed as protectors too often a matter of fact there is an ongoing uh, drive and agenda to make us increasingly docile so that we are less likely to become defenders of those who are underneath our covering. It is immensely important to understand that, that the idea of manhood is about a covering. A man is a covering. He is a physical, emotional, psychological, and spiritual covering for all that he is responsible for from his wife to his children to his grandchildren, to those in his extended family, and even into the community. He is a protector first. Uh, and I tell this when I'm working with young men and black men lead, which is the rite of passage initiative I designed and created to help properly socialize young black males into manhood. Uh, the first principle I teach is that a black man never causes harm to a black woman. A black man is designed to be a protector of black women. And then I just I, I, I uh, describe to them this thing that if you look, you see that when we are developing, when we start to go through puberty, we can have someone uh, uh, as men, we can have a female as boys. We can have a female same age who up until that point of puberty is equal to us in strength and speed and everything else. And then all of a sudden we become bigger. We become stronger. We also gain a sense of aggression that, that comes along with testo the increase in testosterone production. And this aggression and this increase in voice, which is also more intimidating, the deeper the voice, the more intimidating. It's our version of the lion's roar. And what it is, is it's a form of, it is the preemptive warning that, hey, you're entering into a space that's protected by a black man is the voice. And then we have uh, the aggression. The aggression is meant to use the increased physical strength and presence uh, to defend and protect that which we are responsible for. So before we ever develop and understand and become capable or skilled to become providers, we are already physically gifted and mentally and emotionally prepared to be protectors. So the first thing is that we are protectors. The second thing is that we are providers. Now, while it is immensely important to understand that we are providers in the sense of material things. We provide a roof, we provide food, we provide clothing, uh, we provide the 
things that are desired and not just needed. We are providers in the sense of that, but we provide so much more. We provide emotional support. We provide leadership and guidance. We provide uh, uh, edification and encouragement. We provide an environment, an environment that our women feel safe in so that they can open up their gift of life. And their gift of life isn't just uh, uh, constricted to physical life. They have a spiritual womb that needs safety and security to open up. And we have the ability to provide the environment that provide that offers the security necessary for our women to step into the fullness of their spiritual prowess and open up their spiritual wounds. And when that happens, all kind of things take place. It all starts with us. It can't happen without us. So that's that. So you you have the first two are pro, uh, protector and provider. The next one is a promoter. I said, what is that? Just what I said. What we find is when you don't know who you are as a man, when you haven't been properly socialized into who you are as a man, you tend to want to use your family as a promoter of yourselves. Look what I'm doing. Look how I'm doing it. Uh, you want your family to recognize you, acknowledge you, pump you up. And while it's important for a man to have a woman that acknowledges him, that can be done within the house. It doesn't necessarily have to be an outward thing that I just need to know you believe in me. I just need to know you know who I am. I just need to hear you speak the truth. And that is something that is so powerful that it drives me to be better every day. But a man who knows who he is doesn't need the family to pump him up. He pumps them up. Man, have you ever saw my son do this? Have you ever heard my daughter do this? Man, my wife is exceptional in this area. Man, my wife can do this. My wife can do that. My wife, my children. Uh, it's it's a constant edification and lifting. He does it directly to them, telling them who they are. But he also speaks it and he makes sure it's known out in the world that these are uh, those who I cover and these are who they can be and are and will become. And this is so powerful. So now you have a protector, a provider, and a promoter. The next you have a priest. And this is so important because we often talk and, and we speak of the spirituality and the spiritual prowess of women and we tend to act and believe as if men have no spiritual gauge, but the man is the priest. And what I mean by that, the man is the direct link between the designer God and the family. Now the wife is going to be the one who prays the most, but the the man is going to be the one who prays direct. See, she's got all this other stuff that she has on her mind that she's talking to God about, but you're getting revelation. You're tapping into the guidance. You're tapping into the revelation. You're tapping into the ideas. You're tapping into the new power. You're the one that's succumbing. And then you can take every situation with that priesthood into the presence of of the designer into the presence of God into the presence of how you have you see the divine being in whatever way you want to see it. I'm not here to tell you, but I'm telling you that's got to be a connection, a direct connection. Your wife can't have a closer relationship to God than you do. It's it, it, it can't work that way. So then that leaves you with that that takes you means you have a protector, you have a provider, you have a promoter, and you have a priest. Finally, you have a prophet. And when I say prophet, I don't mean in the sense of uh, the way it's often seen. So you have the office of prophet, and if you're talking uh, Judeo-Christianity, uh, you have the office of prophet, but you have the gift of prophecy. And the office of prophet is the one who was actually sent and held the prophet's office and came with a message. The the prophetical gift is believed that to be able to see things and hit things that and, and, and know things that others don't and to be able to deliver those messages. And they normally coincide with each other, but they can't act 
uh, mutually exclusive of one another. What I'm speaking of here when I say prophet, I mean the power to speak into the lives of the people you cover, the power to speak into the life of your wife each and every day when she walks out of the house, that this is going to be a blessed day for you, that your lips will speak nothing but power and, and, and force and, and, and positivity. Your ears will be only open to the things that edify you, to the things that open up and reveal things that you need to know. It will not receive anything negative. Your eyes will see the blessings and the glory that God has for you. Your heart will plump and flow courage and you get to speak and you get to call that thing all the way down. Do you send your kids out and you tell them today's going to be a blessed day in school. Today your mind will open up and you will receive all that the teacher is giving you and you will be able to explore the many aptitudes and advances and spectrums of what being taught in a way that other kids can't because you have the blessings of your father over you. You have the ability to prophesy and to speak into the life of each and every individual. And I'm not speaking of this on a highly religious level. I'm speaking of it on a very spiritual level, a level that says your kids hear what you say about them. And because you are a primary label giver, you are literally dictating and telling them what they will be, who they will become. Speak right. Speak power. Speak light. Speak elevation. Speak conquering. Speak the power to do the things that you know you were designed to do and speak it into their lives daily. So then that means you come up with the five P's. You have a protector, a provider, a promoter, a priest, and a prophet. That's black manhood. That's black manhood. We need to step into that. We need to stop finger pointing so much. We need to stop blaming everybody else. Yes, there are some wayward stuff going on. Yes, there are mechanisms and machinations in play to, to emasculate us and to take away our power. Uh, many times we are fighting uh, uh, helplessly uh, with our women. We need to settle down and discover who we are. Once we discover who we are, we walk in that truth. We don't ask permission to walk in it. We don't need anybody else to tell us who we are. We know who we are and we stand firmly in it and we move in it with love and compassion for those we are to care for, but with a sternness and a stand-up mentality and mindset that says there's no room to waver. Either way, we're walking a journey of power. This is our moment where we are going to have to wake up older men. You need to start tugging on the shirts of these younger cats and start lifting them up, but holding them accountable. Brothers, we need to come together and that needs to be a level of accountability that says this can't happen on my watch. I love you, brother, but you're out of line. We have got to start understanding that that can't be this individualism that flows through the currents of our culture nowadays and Expect empowerment within our communities. It's time for us to stand up now. It's time for us to stand up now. Look, that's another one on uh, another uh, Monday's Manly Mandates. Look, I am going to keep these things coming. I am going to bring it to you. I'm going to edify you, brothers. I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to share some things with you historically, spiritually ancient literature, uh, we are going to become what we were designed to be if I have anything to do with it. I absolutely love every last one of you, no matter where you are in your journey. It's time to walk it out. On that note, I'm out. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They said, I should give it up like yeah, that just ain't good. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time. You know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like 
Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.